is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Your missionary every day, tell the world that Jesus is the way, the Lord is soon returning. Welcome to our missionary stories for children, but they are for every age. This is Nathan of Jerusalem, and we're going to find out he lives now, at the first of this story, in Chicago. His grandmother and his grandfather had been there for a year, and he were, had learned to love them more and more all the time. His grandfather was an ultra-Orthodox Jew, and his grandmother and he wept when they left, and he told him not to be ashamed to weep. He said, look at my tears. And we saw how differently he dressed, and we're to never, ever laugh at anyone that dresses differently or looks differently. And when he said goodbye to him, this was the hardest thing for him. But his grandfather told him a secret. He is 12 years old, and he told him that he was going to have his bar mitzvah in Jerusalem because by the welling wall, because that is where the Messiah is coming to reign as king. You see, in the Old Testament, he was the prophet that was to come. Today, he's our great high priest, and then we're going to reign with him a thousand years as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And this is the only time when we come into his presence that we can ever know perfect peace. But if you know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, you have his peace because the Holy Spirit is our peace, our love, joy, and peace. That's our inward life no matter what's happening. And then long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness toward others. And then faith, meekness, and temperance toward God. That's why we pray in Christ's name, because Christ is in heaven, and he is interceding for us. And we cannot get to God any other way except to pray in Christ's name. And then when we pray in Christ's name, he says, if we ask anything in his name, in Christ's name, he will do it that the Father may be glorified. All of these lessons. Now, this little boy is learning from a teacher that was a Jew. And he said, how do you know all of this? And she said, I'm a Jew, a Christian Jew. And he thought all Gentiles were Christians. But how could anyone be a Jew and a Christian? This little boy did not understand all that she was telling him, but he was doing like his grandfather said, always think, boy, think. So we're going to find out what happened with this boy as he went back to see his teacher again because he was very rude to her and he had been taught to never be rude or unkind to anyone. So when he went back, she taught him 1 Corinthians 2, why he couldn't understand this. And this is for every person that is lost today because he says in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, 
for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. We're going to find out today the spiritual faculties of the Spirit and what Nathan learned that he never knew before. Let's pray. O oh, gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly thank Thee and praise Thee that Thine is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. We want to extol Thee. We want to praise Thy name forever and ever. We want to offer the sacrifice of praise to Thee continually. We are asking for every person today to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and learn these truths and teach them to their children diligently, all of us as parents. We are failing in the greatest command that God has given to us to teach our children diligently the Word of God, the only thing that is eternal. Only those things that are eternal are important. And to know Christ is life's highest attainment. And we know it is the blood of Jesus Christ that makes an atonement for our souls. And we're rejoicing in all of those that thou art saving today 100-fold. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So when we think about this little boy and think of all the children out here in the world that wants this word, wants to be taught, and we are failing, and time is running out, we must go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So his teacher had told him that Messiah had come already. And his grandfather told him that Messiah was coming to Jerusalem. And then he said, how can this be? How do you know all of this? And she told him, she said, I am a Jew and I am a Christian. Now for you all that have followed my lessons in Ephesians, here's what he teaches us about becoming one as Jew and Gentile. So he says in chapter 3 of the book of Ephesians, which in other ages, this mystery, this uh, mystery, you need to know the mysteries of the faith, in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, to the people in the Old Testament, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles, the prophets by the Spirit. Just like we read, you cannot understand these words that we give until you're born again because the Spirit of God is our teacher. He's the best teacher. That's the only teacher I have ever had. And great men and women of God, the Jewish people that know the Old Testament, that taught the Word of God to us. This is how we are to live, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Now this is Ephesians 3, verse 6. And of the same body and partakers of the, His promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. This is how we are to live, the power that says no to sin. And the Holy Spirit can't work apart from the Word of God. So after you're born again, you have to study the Word or you will always be a carnal Christian or a baby Christian. And then in verse 8, Unto me, who am the least of all the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's how we are one in Christ. And we are one with Christ and one with our Heavenly Father. So when he went to the wonderful Happy Day Club, he found out 
that she was truly a Jew, and that's how she knew. But he walked out on her and left because he did truly have to go to the synagogue with his father. But she told him about Jesus Christ coming down from heaven, dying on the cross, and now he went back to heaven and he's preparing a place for us. She said, your grandfather is right. He is coming to Jerusalem to reign as the Jews king. And he today is our great high priest. And we are one. And that's the only way you can become a child of God. So when he went home, he went to the synagogue with his father. And then he came back home and his mother had prepared the meal. And we saw last week how she had the fish that she had prepared and she cut the head off and gave it to him, the man of the house, because he is the one that is the head of the home. But we have Christ the head of our home. The man is to represent Christ. If he's the head of the home, he is obeying Christ and following Christ in oneness. Every man is to be the head of the home like Christ is the head of the church and we are the body. And then he gave each one a piece of bread and they prayed, asked blessing at the table. This is what we are to do. And then the next morning they went to the synagogue again. That was the Sabbath day. And this was the greatest honor for his father. His father was asked to come up and read from the Bible, from the Old Testament. And the men and the boys were in one area of the synagogue and the women were in another. So everyone, when they meet, they say, Shalom, Shalom, peace, peace. Oh, isn't that wonderful to have his perfect peace? And this is what you can have if you know Christ. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God, Romans 5.1. So he met a stranger at the synagogue, and this stranger was far away from his family, and he brought him home with him. After they had had the meal, he was talking with this Jew about God bringing all the Jews from all the nations of the world back to Israel. And his dad said, I am thinking about going to Jerusalem to live. And Nathan thought his heart would stop because that's what he wanted to do. And he asked him, Nathan, what do you think about this? And he wanted to go to Jerusalem. And then he looked at his mother, and his mother was smiling. You see, this is how we're to treat other people. And this is what God is doing today since 1948, May 14 at 4 o'clock, when the Jewish nation became a nation after all those years. And they are all coming back to Jerusalem to look for their Messiah. And this is what we are to be looking for, that blessed hope. That is Jesus Christ coming in the clouds to take us to be with him before the time of the seven-year tribulation period in the book of Revelation, beginning with chapter 6. And then, after this, he couldn't think about anything but what he had done, being rude to his teacher. Oh, he said, I have to go. I must go back. I must go back. Since I'm going to be a man in a year, I must go. I must not be a coward. But he went. He went around the house. He went back days, and he didn't have enough nerve to go in. He went around the house three times this time. And then he rang the doorbell. She was waiting for him. She had been praying that he would come back. And then she went to, once again, the lesson on 
Isaiah 53 and read more from that book. And then she read once again about the Jews rejecting their Messiah because he came as a baby and they rejected him and he blinded their eyes so that the Gentiles could be saved. You see, this is how God works in everything that he does. You see, he chose us before the foundation of the world because he knew who was going to be saved. And he, he, with the Jews, he said to them, now I just want you to listen why he chose the Jews. Just the reason he chose us Gentiles. He set them aside so we Jews, Gentiles, could be saved, and then we could all become one. He says in Deuteronomy chapter four, seven, in chapter seven, listen what he said. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for ye are the fewest people. The Lord, he said, because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep his oath that he had sworn unto his fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, hath brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh. Now this is the most amazing thing because when he came back to talk to her, she said, oh, I won't. She, he said, tell me how we can, you can worship three gods. So she showed him the Trinity. She showed him the Trinity. And this is the most amazing thing. He said, see, there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we worship with the Spirit. And you see, the soul, we, he said, she, that's just the same as you. You have a Trinity. But you're not a trinity until you accept Jesus Christ as Savior. You're only partly whole. And as a Jew, as a Gentile, you cannot know Christ without being born again by the Spirit of God. You see, your soul, she said, is in, this is the gates of the soul, imagination, conscience, memory, reasons, and affections and there's nothing in our body. And your spirit, the spiritual faculties, are faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. And you don't have any of them until you're born again. So, after he, she was telling him this, and then she asked him a question. She said, do you celebrate the Passover? Now, I have up here on my board, Acts 4.12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. So you see, of all the gods in the world, there is only one that is eternal. There is only one that is three persons in one. God the Father is in heaven. God the Son came to the earth to die for us. After Christ went back to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit. And she said to him, do you celebrate the Passover? And he, I mean, you know, that was such a question. Why, you know we celebrate the Passover. And she said, well, when you celebrate the Passover, what do you do? What happened when you came out of Egypt? Every Egyptian home, one died. The oldest son and even the cattle, they died. God told us Jews we had been in bondage for over 400 years. That's why you celebrate the Passover. And every person that did not have the blood on their door, there was death in that home. But God told you to put a lamb for each house and put the blood on the doorpost and the death angel would not 
stop at your door. All of the firstborn lived in every Jewish home because they believed God. And this was pointing to when Christ would come and die for us. You see, you were brought out by the blood and by the power of God. We are born again. It is the blood that makes an atonement for our souls. We are brought out of death. God sent his son to die instead of us. And when we read Isaiah 53, this is talking about, he is in Isaiah 53, 27 times. And it doesn't mean the Jews. It is Christ. And she said, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, Jesus Christ, the sins of us all. Now, when you put that blood on the doorpost with that little hyssop, that was faith that God was going to deliver you. That is the same thing that happens for every true believer. Do you want to receive this gift today? And he said, no, I can't because my grandfather told me not to listen to this foolishness. Now, let me tell you today, if there is one person that is listening, that Satan has caused you not to accept this gift of eternal life. You are obeying Satan, your enemy, and not God. Just because his grandfather said, don't do this, he didn't receive the gift. And today is the only day you are sure of. This moment that I am talking to you, you may draw your last breath before this goes off the air, and you would go, your soul would go to an eternal hell. And after death, it's too late. The demons of hell meet your soul at death. For every believer, our soul and our spirit go to be with the Lord. This is what we must do to reach our children. So she told him about how the Jews hated him and even tried to kill him when he was on the earth. And this was hard for him. This was really hard for him. So he came back again, and she talked about the Holy Spirit, just like I'm teaching you today. And she told him that when you lay this, and all of you know I have my Star of David, she told him the same things I'm teaching you. When you put that Trinity down like this, and then you put this other trinity over it, you would have two, it makes the star of David. And that is your trinity and God's trinity. That means you are born again. And then he, he, left, he left again. He went back to tell her as soon as he found out his dad was going to go to Jerusalem. And he was going to be leaving America. And, and he thought, do I really want to go? Do I really want to go? Well, he had to come back because she told him to come back. She had a lesson about David that she wanted him to hear from the Old Testament. He came back before he left. And she had a story to tell him. And this story, she had this up, lined up there so, for him to see. And that Jesus Christ is going to reign, and he's going to sit on the throne of David. And here's what I want you, to, you children to see today, she said. So she showed him how the Messiah came as a little baby. Now remember, she had told him this once. You cannot tell this story just one time. 
You have to hear it over and over and over again to think that God would send his only son to this earth to die for me, to die instead of me. And then he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, and he went to the cross and he died instead of us. Then he went back to heaven and his disciples saw him being taken up into heaven. He arose from the dead after three days and three nights. He arose from the dead. He walked on this earth for 40 days. The only people that saw him were those that had received him as Savior. But they did not have the Spirit until he went back to heaven. And this time, he sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in the lives of believers. They knew about Jesus, but they didn't know about the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, he went before he went, he said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Now we have his divine nature. First of all, it is divine conception for all of us conceived by the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus Christ was conceived. And this divine nature lives within us, this Shekinah glory. And we must reach Jews and Gentiles everywhere. When you find out what happened to this little boy, you are going to weep and you're going to rejoice. And I pray that you will pray for the peace of Jerusalem Psalm 122 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace shall be within thy walls and prosperity in thy palaces. I pray that you will each love Israel, love every race. It's only Jew and Gentile in the Bible and then we are all believers, Jew or Gentile. This is how we are to live. I pray we will love the way he commands us to love. Tune in again next week. This story is one of the best to teach the love of Christ and how we are to love one another. There is no other love except divine love. Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you, be a missionary.